Section 2.8 in Lay's textbook, which is the same as 4.2 in Edwards. The topic is subspace. So subspace, uh, usually is denoted by the letter S, is a non-empty subset. Subset means part of a vector space V. If S itself is a vector space, in other words, just to be part of, so here is a vector space V, so it's a big island, is the vector space V, then within the big island, you have a little small island called S. So for S to be subspace of what vector space V, first of all, it has to be part of it. And second of all, it has to be a vector space itself. So just to be part of it does not qualify to be a subspace. So there's a difference between subset and subspace. Subset means part of a bigger set. Subspace is what? Part of a bigger set which is itself is a vector space as well. So that's a big difference. Um, so the question is, how do I prove that what a given set is a subspace of a bigger space called vector space? Well, turns out uh, to prove S is a subspace of a bigger uh, space called vector space V, all we have to satisfy is just the first two axioms of the vector space, namely, we have to satisfy what? Addition under operation, uh, um, 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 oper um, addition operation and a scalar multiplication. Turns out if these two, what? Axioms are satisfied because S was part of V to begin with, the remaining eight axioms automatically are satisfied. So once again, to prove a set S is a subspace of a bigger set called vector space, all we have to do is what satisfy the first two axioms of a vector space, which is what? Uh, addition operation and a scalar uh, multiplication operation. Because if these two axioms are satisfied and S is part of V to begin with, the remaining eight axioms are automatically are satisfied. So let's do a problem. Suppose S stands for all solutions to the second order linear homogeneous differential equation. To prove S is a subspace of a vector space, and the vector space in this case contains all the second derivative continuous functions. So of all the second derivative continuous functions, we like to look for those functions which satisfy this differential equation. So the question is, are the solutions of this differential equation form a subspace to a vector space which contains all the second derivative continuous functions? So what do you do? In order to prove this, what you do, you select two functions in S, not in V, but in S. So therefore, because they are in S, they must be the solutions of the given differential equations. So now you go back to the differential equation in order to prove axiom one, replace these y's with y1 plus y2. Go through the algebraic manipulation, get yourself to this point, and now because these were the solutions, so they have to add up to zero. So uh, zero plus zero is zero. Axiom number one is satisfied. Uh, addition operation, we have a closure on the addition operation. Axiom number two, go back to these uh, y's, replace them with CY1, you know, scalar multiplication, CY1. Go through the algebraic manipulation, get C1 equals what? Y1 double prime plus 2Y1 prime minus Y1. But remember, Y1 was the solution. So this has to add up to 0. So C times 0 is 0 for any C.
So axiom number two has been satisfied. So therefore the conclusion is S is a subspace of what? Of V, which V happens to be set of all second uh, derivative continuous functions. <clears throat> One of the ways which you can, uh, what, um, <clears throat> disprove that what, um, a given set is not a subspace of a bigger space, vector space, is just to show that what, uh, the set S fails to contain the zero vector, then, then it is not a subspace. In other words, if a set S, if the set S does not contain the zero vector, then you can uh, draw the conclusion the set is not a subspace of V. However, warning, if it does contain zero vector, it can go either way. So you cannot draw a conclusion. Therefore, in those cases, you have to what? Check the axioms number one and two. So once again, this would be a fast way to see if a set is a subspace of a bigger set. Check and see if the zero vector is contained in the set. If zero vector is not contained, then the set is not a subspace. However, if the set contains zero vector, it can go either way. So be very careful about applying this fact to a problem. So now let's do this. Suppose V, the vector space, is set of all polynomials of degree two or less. That's what P2 stands for. And S is a sub subset, that means part of that polynomial. However, it is not just any polynomial. It looks like this. Um, a x squared plus one, where a is a real number. So once again, we the vector space, the bigger space is P2. So this is your vector space. But within that uh, P2, you have S. But S, the smaller island, is all those second degree polynomial, which they look like this, A x squared plus one. Question, is this set subspace of this set, right? Okay, so, um, so remember, <clears throat> to prove S is a subspace, what we need to what? Verify the first two axioms of the definition of vector space only, all right? So what you do, you kind of go, okay, let P and Q to be in S. You always select your what? Elements in the subset okay so two random polynomials these are two random polynomials in s because they are in s so they have to have this format ax squared plus one so i'm going to let px to be a1x squared plus one qx to be a2x squared plus one so now i'm going to go ahead and see if axiom number one is satisfied P plus Q of X is equal to what? P of X plus Q of X, which is what? A1 plus A2 X squared plus two. But if you uh, kind of let this guy to be A, you get A X squared plus two, and that is not the format we started from because we were supposed to come up with A X squared plus one, not two. Therefore, axiom number what? one fail because this does not look like a member of s you have a two here therefore uh, s is not closed under addition so s is not a subspace of p2 also here was a shortcut i could have what um, <clears throat> uh, apply to prove this guy is not a subspace notice um, S does not contain the zero vector. Notice no matter what X is, this is never going to be equal to zero. Never. Because you always, whatever this guy is, you're going to add one to it. So the conclusion is what? S does not contain zero. Therefore, any X. Therefore, what? 
S is not a subspace. The um, notation we use for subspace is we go S equals some random vector in the vector space, and then we impose the conditions. In other words, this is how the set notation of a what subspace should look like. So you kind of go a random vector in your what vector space, and then you would have a condition on that random vector. How does it look like? And that's called set S. So that's the notation. The other way to prove if a set is a subspace of a vector space is by this theorem. It says, let us be the spanning set of u1, u2, all the way to um, as in Mary, being rn, as in Nancy. Then set S is a subspace of rn. In other words, S is a subspace spanned by what? In other words, any vector in S is, can be written as a linear combination of these guys. So in this case, let's do an example. Let V, the vector space, to be what? Uh, the three-dimensional space. And S be all those vectors in what? Three-dimensional space such that they have this form. 2A minus B, 3B, A plus 5B where A, B are real numbers. So if I manipulate this vector and write it as A times 2, 0, 1 plus B times negative 1, 3, 5, which is basically this guy decomposing in two uh, vectors. So you can tell that what any vector in S, uh, in R3, uh, in S, can be what written as linear combination of what? these two vectors. Therefore, we conclude what S contains the spanning set of 2, 0, 1, and what? And um, uh, negative 1 and what? 3, 5. Therefore, according to this uh, theorem, because S is a spanning set, so therefore S is a subspace. So that would be an alternative way of proving if a set is a subspace of a bigger set. Very quickly, uh, let's go over geometric description of subspace of R3 uh, of dimensions 0, 1, 2, 3. Remember, this is your uh, what vector space. This is your V, correct? But we are talking about the dimensions of a what subspace in R3, what? with the dimensions of 0, 1, 2, 3. In other words, these are the dimensions of the subspace of what? R3. If the dimension is uh, for subspace is 0, this corresponds to subspace, which what? Geometrically, it means uh, the origin uh, of the Cartesian coordinate system. And the dimension of R0 is 0. So you are here. Geometrically, that's what this means. However, if the dimension of your subspace, not the vector space, but the subspace is one, then this is like what? This is about uh, subspace are generated by a single non-zero what? Uh, basis uh, vector. So they correspond to a line which goes through the what? Origin. So that would be the geometric description of what? Uh, when the vector spaces are three and subspaces are one. So the dimension of R1 is one. So that would be the dimension of the what? Not the vector space, but the subspace. If the dimension of the subspace is two, then uh, that would be these uh, subspaces are generated by two non-collinear, that means they are not parallel, uh, vectors, so they correspond to a plane through the origin. So this would be a plane through the origin. And the dimension of this subspace is 2. Finally, what if the dimension of the what? Subspace is the same as dimension of the vector space, 3 in this case. 
Then in that case, the dimension of subspace is three. So the only three subspace of R3 is R3 itself. In other words, when the dimensions match, so what happens is what? The subspace is the same as what? Uh, vector space itself. However, uh, uh, fun fact here, if S is a subspace of V and the dimension of what the vector space is N, keep in mind the dimension of S is always less than N. It cannot be the same as N because it's part of it. If it is the same, then what? S is the same as the vector space. So please keep that in mind. The dimension of S never exceeds what? The dimension of the what? The vector space, because it's part of it, not the whole set. If it is equal, then what? They coincide. That means the subspace is the vector space itself. Thank you.